Hey guys, happy Friday. Thank you for joining me for Unity Prayer. Um, today, the Lord placed on my heart to speak about unforgiveness. And so today's prayer is going to be, you know, maybe challenging for some of you, especially, you know, what I'm going to ask you to do. But I pray that God gives you a heart and ears to receive. Um, this morning during prayer, the Lord led me to Psalm 69. And Psalm 69 is so powerful because it talks about undeserved suffering. Why do the righteous suffer? You know, these are many questions that we have. Why are there so many injustices in the world? And what do we do when we encounter them in our lives? But we know that the Bible teaches us how important it is that we walk in forgiveness. When we don't walk in forgiveness, we hold on to bitterness. And the Bible says that when we don't forgive our brothers, when we don't forgive our enemies, it causes a wall between us and God because he will not hear our prayers. And that's scriptural. And we don't want to cause anything to become a division between us and the Most High God, especially our prayer lives. We want him to hear our prayers because that's our lifeline to him. That is, you know, our power source, praying. And um, it's important that we remember to walk in forgiveness, even forgiving our enemies that hurt us and harm us and do wicked things. And that is not always easy, which is why we have to pray. <laughs> we have to ask God, God, give me your strength to love. Give me the strength to forgive because on my own in this flesh, I don't think I can do it. And it's important that we're raw and we're honest with God. And that's what you see in Psalm 69. David is so emotionally raw with the Lord. He doesn't try to hide how he feels, but he cries out to God in the middle of his, in the midst of his suffering for God's guidance and his help. And that's what we have to do. You know, um, there's a lot of turmoil in our country right now, you know, with the George Floyd incident. And uh, it's very disheartening. It can be very uh, frustrating. But I just want us to remember how important it is that we don't let bitterness and anger take root in our heart. Because when we do that, we allow the enemy to win. And the Lord can't do a perfect work with that seed planted in our heart. So we have to learn to release those things. And part of that, a big part of that the Lord wants me to talk about is forgiveness. And that means forgiving our enemies and those who do wicked things. So this morning, I will be praying for the officer that took the life of George Floyd. And I know that this is hard for a lot of people, maybe to even understand. But I want you to remember that Jesus said when he was hanging on the cross, he said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And I'm sorry I'm emotional about that because that's hard. <laughs> It's hard to forgive people when they mistreat you. It's hard to look the other way when they do things that don't always um, sit right with you. But that's what we're called to do. So um, I ask that you join me in lifting up our nation to walk in the power of forgiveness and in the strength of forgiveness that the Lord will give us as we pray and um, that we release this man that took the life of George Floyd to God. And that we pray for the family of George Floyd, that they would have supernatural peace, that the Lord would comfort them, that he would give them understanding that, you know, his ways are higher than our ways, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and that they would just lean on him and trust in God to, to know that justice belongs to him. Vindication is the Lord's. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word because it's a lamp upon our feet, a light upon our path. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding us and teaching us and convicting our hearts. I thank you for convicting my heart today, Lord. I pray that you give us the strength as, the, as a nation, as brothers and sisters in Christ, to be the example of what it means to walk in forgiveness, what it means to show love in the way that you would have us to do. That would be pleasing to you, Father. Lord, I lift up that officer that took the life of George Floyd. Lord, I pray that you convict his heart. May he confess, may he repent of his sins. Lord, we know that you have the power to change. We look at people like Saul, who you turned into Paul, who convicted, Christ, con convicted Christians, condemned murdered Christians. But yet you took this man and you changed his heart for the better of your kingdom, for the betterment of our world. 
And Lord, I just pray that you would touch his heart, that he would repent of the wickedness that he has done, Lord. We lift him up to you. We give him to you. Justice and vindication are the Lord's. We release him to you, Father. Let your will be done your way, your way, Lord. Your will, not ours. I remember the famous words as you stood on the cross when people spat on you and mocked you and you were in such excruciating pain and you were in such, I mean, people were offending you left and right, yet you said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Lord, I ask for our nation on the behalf of our nation, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Lord, I pray that your name would be glorified in the earth. Lord, I pray that we make you proud in this hour as believers and children of the Most High God, that we stand united and we walk in forgiveness, Lord. Heal our hearts. Help us to walk in your love. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. So, yes, um, thank you for praying with me, you all. And, you know, I just pray that as our nation and our country that we stand united, that we don't fall for the devices of the enemy, but that we cry out for the voiceless, that we stand for those who are being the injustices in our world, and that we don't turn a blind eye. You know, it's not divisive to speak up against things when it's not right. We're looking more like our father. So, um... I just urge you, you know, if there's anything, but you know, that you're walking around, that you're holding in your heart, release it. It's not worth it. God has the ability to take up your cause, and trust me, His justice, His vindication is more that you can do. In, 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 anyways, your vindication would only last for a hot second, but God's is eternal. So you just give those things to God. And um, so later on, I'm actually going to come back and do a lesson on Psalm 69 because the Holy Spirit, he just gave me so much to share and I hope that it will bless you. So I will come back and speak on suffering, the suffering of the righteous. Why do we suffer and what does that look like, you know? And um, yeah, I was thinking earlier, you know, about the WWJD bracelets. Remember those in high school? <laughs> what would Jesus do? You know, we need to bring that back. You know, when we get in our flesh and we start to get all, you know, upset and frustrated, it's such a great reminder to always ask yourself, you know, what would Jesus do in this situation? It's humbling. Yeah. Well, you all take care and I will see you later. Thanks for listening. Bye.